In this video, all we're going to do is use a program called Stellarium, which is a free planetarium software. And we're going to look at what the sky looks like in different latitudes on the Earth and how it would appear to move depending on which direction you're facing. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the sky would look like if you are in the northern hemisphere, for example, the continental US. So here I am, I'm facing south in the continental US, and it is approximately 1 o'clock p.m. for me. It's about solar noon, which means the sun is pretty much right up above the southern horizon for me. It's high in the sky, but it's not directly overhead. How will the, sky, how will the sun appear to move if I were to allow the time to move forward. What will happen is, is that the sun will move towards the western horizon and begin to set. So let me hit play here. And we'll see the sun appear to move. I'm increasing the speed so it's moving faster than normal. So the sun is moving to the right of south which means it's heading towards the west. I'm speeding it up just a little bit. Let's see what direction the sun will set on this day. Keep in mind that it's still January, which means the sun will set somewhere south of west. Not directly in the west, not north of west, but set somewhere in the west. Notice that the sun got to its highest point in the sky above the southern horizon and, that set, and then it set somewhere in the west. Okay, what about the stars? For the stars, let's start with an east-facing view. Remember, we're in the continental US. A lot of people think that the stars just rise, go straight up, get overhead, and then go straight down. But it actually depends where you are on the Earth. For those of us in the continental US, the stars are actually, if they rise at all, they'll actually rise, and instead of going straight up, they'll move towards the south. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm going to get rid of the atmosphere here using the uh, program. All right, so now I can see the stars. And in this case, I'm able to see uh, the constellation uh, Orion. And I'm going to set time forward here. So now things are moving. Let me get it moving a little bit faster than normal. Notice that the stars are coming up from the east horizon. They're rising, and they're going up and to the right for an east-facing view. Up and to the right which means they're heading towards the south. Even if the stars are rising north of east, they go up and to the right. The further north of east they rise, the bigger their path will be above the horizon and the longer they will spend above the horizon. A star that is rising exactly directly in the east, that is due east, will spend 12 hours above the horizon. If it rises north of east, it'll, it will spend more than 12 hours above the horizon, and if it spends, uh, it'll spend less than 12 hours above the horizon if it rises south of east. So what happens if we face south? So here I am, I'm facing south of east, and uh, we have uh, stars, planets, and even the sun rising here, getting to a high point in the sky, and I will pause it right when the sun gets to its highest point. So notice that the sun has gotten to its highest point on this day above the southern horizon. It's not directly overhead, but it's relatively high in the sky. So it's gone from south of east, high in the southern sky, and you can probably guess at this point that the sun will set south of west. So let's watch it do that. So I'm facing southwest at this point. Notice how the sun is going down towards the southwestern horizon. Let me face 
west completely here. Because the stars had that ro that are rising and setting on this day got to their highest point in the south, if you're facing west, the stars will be coming down or appear to be setting from the so south part of the sky. So they'll be coming from the left down to the right. What if I face north? Okay, so here we are. Remember continental US facing north North, you get a very peculiar view of star motions. Here, many things are going to be what we call circumpolar. That is, they're going to be always above the horizon. Because our north celestial pole is high in the northern sky. Let's see if we can uh, find the north celestial pole. The way that I do it is by usually finding uh, the Big Dipper first. Now. You can probably see the Big Dipper appearing in your view. I'll trace it out for you. I'll hit pause. Here is the stars of the Big Dipper. Here's the bowl of the Dipper. You can use two stars in the Big Dipper to help you find Polaris, which is the star that's located at the North Celestial Pole. You can use Merak, and you can use Dubba. These two stars, if you were to trace a line through them heading towards the north, would eventually bring you fairly close to the North Star, which would be the first brightest star that you, that you would arrive at if you followed that line. So there is Polaris, which is pretty much above the northern horizon, and you can use that to help you find north. So if you're ever lost and you need to find your directions at night, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, look for the Big Dipper, which is usually pretty easy to find. Follow the two stars, Merak and Dubba, called the Pointer Stars, and draw a line from them towards, towards uh, the uh, Northern Horizon, and eventually you'll find the North Star. Okay, because that is the North Celestial Pole, in our view, all the stars will appear to rotate around that, because that's the... Uh, north axis of the north celestial sphere. So let me hit play and let's take a look at what happens. Alright, what we notice is that Polaris appears to be fairly stationary with respect to everything else in the sky. It stays pretty much in the same altitude above the horizon and it doesn't appear to be uh, rotating. Instead, everything appears to be rotating around it. Notice that the Big Dipper is just moving around Polaris in a big circle, if you're in a north-facing view. Is this clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, if you're facing north, you can see that it is counterclockwise. It takes 24 hours for these stars to go all the way around a complete 360 degrees. And that's because it takes that long for the Earth to spin one time on its axis. For those keeping track at home, it would actually be about 23 hours and 56 minutes, but just remember 24 hours approximately. The closer a star is, to the North Celestial Pole, the more likely it's going to be circumpolar depending on where you're at in the Northern Hemisphere. The further away it is in the uh, sky from the North Star, the more likely it is that it will go below the horizon. But notice that even the Big Dipper, which is pretty distant from the North Star in the sky, only barely grazes the Northern Horizon for our latitude in New York. Thus, most of these stars in the northern sky neither rise nor set. They're always up. Even during the day, you just can't see them because of the uh, sunlight. Alright, so this is our view of uh, different directions in the continental U.S. in the northern hemisphere. What about your view in some other location? If I were to go to the southern hemisphere, I would see something very different. 
So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move ourselves to a different place on the Earth. And I'm going to change our latitude to a south latitude, but keep the same longitude. All right, so that means I'm somewhere near uh, the southern tip of South America. Now here I am in uh, South America, I'm facing north. Well, what happens if I face north and watch the stars move? Well, instead of stars uh, moving from left to right, as we had in our south view, we have stars moving from right to left in our north view. And notice that we don't have a north celestial pole that things are rotating around when facing north here in the southern hemisphere. Stars are still moving from east to west. Remember, if you're facing north, east is to your right and west is to your left. And in this case, if you're facing north, stars are going to get to their highest point in the northern sky and then set. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like in uh, the south. South, for the southern hemisphere, is analogous to facing north in the northern hemisphere. Why? Because there is a south celestial pole in the sky. It's not as easy to find because there's not a bright star like Polaris uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, comparable in the Southern Hemisphere. However, you can still uh, find it. You just go above the Southern Horizon and look for a location that everything appears to be uh, rotating around. So I'm pointing at roughly where that would be in the sky. Again, it takes almost 24 hours for these stars to rotate completely around. But notice something else. The stars are moving clockwise around the south celestial pole in your sky rather than counterclockwise. So it's opposite from what you get in the northern hemisphere. Let me face east. In order to face east, I need to go to the left of south. In contrast to the northern hemisphere, stars still rise in the east, but they move up and to the north rather than up and to the south. So they move up and to the left. And if I face west, stars will still set in the west but they're going to be coming down from the north. So they're going from the right down. So, they're, so they have an arc in that way. That's what you would see in the southern hemisphere. All right, let's take a look at what the sky would look like for you if you were located on the equator. So all I'm going to do here is change to zero degrees latitude, and try and get as close to zero as possible. So here I am on the equator. Stars here at the equator will appear very different. In fact, because I'm standing at the equator, I can see stars in the north celestial hemisphere and in the south celestial hemisphere. So over the course of the year, I could see, in principle, every star that's on the celestial sphere. So I'm going to face east. Stars will still rise in the east. But notice something different when I hit play. Rather than move up and at an angle, stars are moving straight up. So if a star is uh, on the eastern horizon, it will rise and move straight up, get directly overhead, and then set straight down in the western horizon. If a star is rising north of east, it will go straight up. 
get relatively high in your northern sky, and then set north of west. What does it look like if I look towards the south? If I look towards the south, I get that view of stars moving from east to west, and I'm getting that counterclockwise view, except my north sol I'm mean, sorry, my south celestial pole is right on the horizon. This is because I'm standing at the equator. Which means none of these stars are going to uh, stay in the sky all day. All of these stars will rise and then set. Here's what a west facing view looks like. You can see the stars coming from high in the sky and then setting straight down. And if I face north, I've got the counterclockwise rotation around the north celestial pole, which is right on my horizon. If I'm standing at the equator, Polaris is exactly on my northern horizon, and the stars appear to rotate around it counterclockwise, which means all of those stars that were what we called circumpolar when I was in the continental United States now are uh, not circumpolar anymore. They all rise and set. So that's your view if you were standing at the equator, but what about uh, stars at the poles? Your view from the south would only, if you were at the south pole, your view would only allow you to see stars that were located in the south celestial hemisphere, and then vice versa for the north celestial hemisphere. If you're at the north pole, you'd only see those stars. Let's go to one of the poles so you can see what the peculiar motions would appear like. To do that, I'm going to go north 90 degrees so that uh, 90 degrees latitude so that I'm standing right at the North Pole. If I'm standing right at the North Pole, then every direction is going to be south for me, which means uh, the cardinal points will be south no matter where I stand. The North Celestial Pole will be right overhead, directly overhead for me. So Polaris would be directly overhead, which means I'd have to look straight up to see it. What would my view be of the stars when they're in motion? Well, over the course of the night, you'd notice that stars would not rise or set. They would just appear to trace paths around the sky horizontally. which means they would always be in the sky. You'd never see a star rise or set except for the sun. And right now, because it's January, it is a northern hemisphere winter. And at this moment in time, the sun is not above the horizon. And so for the entire day, you would have nothing but stars, no sun. What if I went to a different time? What if I went to uh, Northern Hemisphere summer? So let's try that out. Let's go to uh, July. So here I am at the North Pole, ignore that the horizon <laughs> has uh, grass on it. There's the sun in my sky. When I hit play, notice that on this day, the sun will just appear to move around in the sky horizontally and stay at roughly the same altitude throughout the day. For a person standing at the North Pole, you would have 24 hours of daylight. And that are different views of the motions of stars in the sky at different latitudes on the Earth.